Bottle Ned here, exploring the rusted hulks of abandoned industry. The smells of toxic sludge and petrochemical products surround me. The dust and memories of industry and bygone days are here with us. You know what else is here with us? Bottles! Underneath all this is actually an old landfill site. Yes, this was built on the outskirts of an old city where a marsh used to be. They dumped the trash in the marsh. They built buildings and factories. And over the years, more than a century, toxic leachate has gone down into the soil and interacted with this garbage and changed it into something at once disgusting, harmful, and beautiful. So in this very special episode, we're gonna explore the very dangerous cavernous depths of toxic waste bottle digging. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Holy shit, guys. I just climbed down into this excavation. They dipped into a 19th century city dump. Oh my god, look! There's bottles in here. Holy shit, this sludge. And there's bottles. Oh, oh, oh my god. We got bottles. We got bot, man. Oh my god. Holy shit. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? This is freaking Mondo Bot. Oh, oh crap. Oh shit. Oh, I gotta dig through this. I'm gonna dig through it. Okay. Oh, wish me luck. Oh. We've reached the mother load. It's black gold, baby. Oh my god. Pieces of chamber pots. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh. Black gold. Oh. This is a toxic soup of 19th century petroleum byproducts, tannery effluents, factory runoff, motor oil from a century of cars driving above that has leached into the ground, and potentially many other harmful industrial chemicals. This is 100% Victorian dump from the 1890s and 1880s. Photographer. Bottle gas up in my pants. Oh, God damn it. Woo. Look at this. There's shoes. None of this has seen the light of day for 140 years. It's underneath the streets, man. something that sounds like glass and there's probably coins oh there's all kinds of stuff in here Shit. okay i wish i could just have a, a sifter and look through this imagine the artifacts you'd find i mean you look at how everything's preserved you have corks from barrel kegs or larger bottles you have look at that a beautiful piece of 
maybe a drain, a piece of brass. Oh my God. Look at this. A little jar. Siding in there. Very easy to miss. A little 1880s ointment jar. Oh, Vaseline. <laughs> no Vaseline needed in this dig. Oh man. I'm already I'm ready to go. Oh, look at this. There's a uh, pulled this thing out. It's like a shaving mug or a coffee cup or something. Looks like a coffee cup. They probably threw it away because the handle broke off. There were all these Italian men picking this dump. I read about this dump. Every time there was a load dumped, there were all these dudes with rakes and shovels, just like I'm doing, but 140 years ago, going through this stuff, trying to find anything they could salvage, sell. You'd be amazed how much petrified bone that's been soaking in petrochemical mud for 140 years. How much it sounds like glass when you hit it with a shovel. Damn. Okay, keep going. I'm starting to get a light headache. There's tons of oil and crap in here that you really don't want to breathe in for too long. So I've noticed that if you dig in this dump for too long, you get headaches the next day, you get weird dreams. So yeah, it's not good for you. Actually, it's, uh, it's bad for you. But uh, you know what's better for you than bad? It's bottles. Bee, 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 bee. I think I saw something in here that was shaped like something. Not that, that's also shaped like something. But... Oh, that is something. I don't know what that is. Mystery, mystery relic right there. Have no time, I say. Oh, is that time? Is that time. That looks like an old soldered can, totally preserved. That's wild. Look at that. It's still, it's still got the steely color to it. I mean, no oxidation or rust at all for 140 years. I mean, the level of preservation of stuff down here is incredible. I mean, the artifacts you can find. Wow. Found me a bot pocket up higher. Look at this, all camoed in there. Can you see it? it looks like a Lee and Perrins, man. You know, I can tell there's the little stopper. Stopper still in the top, man. Yeah, that's because of the wood gasket thing on the inside of the neck is holding in. Oh, shit. Is, uh, is holding it in. <laughs> that's crazy. So we'll remove the stopper first. Put that aside. Okay. Uh, seems to be more shite in this upper layer. Okay. This was in there, I don't know what that is. Looks like one of those waffle bottles. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm gonna expose more of it and then I'll, I'll film the extraction. This looks like a jumbo Lee and Perrins, man. What's better than a Lee and Perrins? A giant one. This thing is a bot pocket. I love these. Multiple bot botgasms awaiting us here. Holy crap! At this level, I mean, amazing. Let's hope a couple of these are intact. Okay. Look at that. One, two, three. <clears throat> Damn close. Flavoring extracts broken by the uh, big bomber lean parents. Bot pocket. Bot. Bot pocket, bot number two. Looks like this is gonna be a shoe polish. Ooh. 
Yes, it is gonna be a shoe polish. Naturally, it would be. Let's just hope it's patina, baby. Oh, I love that noise. Ew. Oh, oh God, that smells. <laughs> Jumbo size, baby. That's wild. Wild. Is it a Liam Perrins, though? It's, I don't, yeah, yeah, it's a Liam Perrins. Okay, but it's big. It's a big one, size matters. And we got the, we got the top to it. That's great. All right, two more bots. Oh, I need a bigger bucket. Oh. seen that one hopefully it'll have some patina cool acne blacking <laughs> great name acne blacking i got a real real pretty one back there look at that i think that's going to be a beautiful sauce bottle i think this is a jsp sauce in a beautiful teal color it's wrapped up in a, a nice a nice layer a protective layer of uh, horse poop i love it i love horse poop yes i'm gonna get her get her loose here i think i'll move a little bit okay uh, oh the way it falls out oh oh baby <laughs> Oh, there's a beautiful, oh shoot, the cork just popped out. Do you hear that? Whoa, it was like depressurizing when I removed it. Whoa, that was crazy. Oh my God. Whoa, there's, there's the initials, JSP. I'm gonna wash that really carefully. I don't wanna wash off any of that beautiful patina. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the color. I love that. Oh my God, it's so cool. All right, we'll put that in a special place over here. Hopefully nothing. Roll onto it. Whoa. It's starting to sink really badly in this stuff. I'll put it up there. Ugh. That way it's protected. Nothing will fall onto it. Okay. Look at this, this was a restaurant or something. A restaurant dumped here. Dumps are like this. There'll be like nothing, and then all of a sudden you'll get one load of trash from a different wagon that actually threw some stuff away. So there's more of these sauces, table sauces, uh, more flavoring extracts for cooking. Seeing a little pattern there. I'm thinking this was a restaurant, some liquor bottles. Yep. Beers, oh, everything is so patina, dude. Oh my God. If you just get any one of these bottles intact, you're gonna fucking patina out, dude. Oh, this higher layer actually seems more productive than way down there, but I'm gonna check that too if I don't pass out first. Oh shit. I just maxi fell in there. It's like a deep spot in there. Stupid. Uh, yeah, my boots are full of water now. Yay. Okay. So the way I'm doing this is just like, you just kind of stick the shovel in until you hear something, go clunk. And then use your superior bot deciphering skills to, uh, to see whether or not it's a rock or if it's a bottle. I just wanted to do this before this area fills up with water 
anymore because you're way down in the dump here. She's getting some older stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I actually really would rather go dig in that bot pocket, but just taking a slight break before this fills up with water and uh, submerges us here. But I don't think there's that much. It's kind of sparse down over here. Kind of sparse. Just wood. Just some wood in there. Not much in the way of bottles and heavy trash, which is weird. I think the heavy stuff would sink down deeper into this bay that was here. We're in a bay, by the way. That's why uh, all this stuff is here filled in. Baylands. Yep. Those metal plates are the only thing keeping all this uh, all this sludge from sloughing down in here, reburying this thing. Jeez. You hear that? That is the sound of a bottle. I know it because I'm bottling it. Oh damn it! Well. Technically it's, a, technically it's a bottle, <laughs> crap. But uh, yeah, definitely the sound of something man-made and round anyway, right? That's like a shoe blacking, shoe polish type of bottle from England made of vitreous stone, which means glassius. Cool, I love the flared tops on these things. It's really cool. It looks like a lead pencil, I think. A big old pencil, maybe? Carpenter's pencil? It's not flat, though. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's not wood. Too heavy. Hmm. I'm about to knock this pile down. I just see a little flask sticking out of it. Look at that. Oh, man. I wish that was embossed. That's just a little nipper coffin flask, whiskey flask from the 1890s. Oh, wow. This coffin's buried deep though, man. Look at that. Wow. Oh, I wish they had a circular slug plate with the name of the saloon on it. That would just be amazing. Okay, I'm getting a decent pile of bot going here. Oh. I think this stuff came from the very bottom. Oh, shit. Getting too excited. Oh, yeah. I thought I felt something. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. Right in the pile. What? Is, it, is that a pile? Is that intact? It's the wrong shape for a barrel mustard. See, what the hell is... Whoa, it's different. Whoa, it's a different mustard bottle. Jar. Ugh, whatever. <sighs> oh, it's hard. Hard to like not step where I'm done before. Oof. Dude. Whoa, that is freaking cool. C and C with a real, a totally funky like barrel mustard I've never seen before. I've never seen a barrel mustard like this. This is incredible. C and C. Totally different base, different body shape. Different. That is wild. That's a wild barrel mustard. Totally trippy. Totally cool. Way down in the muck. C and C, whatever that stood for. That is not your typical barrel mustard style. Whoa. It doesn't really have a top. It's like a jar more than a bottle. I mean, the other ones kind of have more of a shoulder that slope to a more narrow lip. <sighs> wow, that's different. Sweet. Oh God, oh, I'm getting tired and nauseous from these fumes. I'm smelling something really special down here, by the way, guys. I wish I could describe it to you. It's, 
I've smelled it before in the dumps, in the preserved, you know, layers of dumps. It's cod liver oil. And I, I just can't describe it. It was a medication used by people in the 19th century. You know, some of you may have heard, oh, my grandma always complained about having to, her, her mom giving her a tablespoon of cod liver oil when she was sick. But um, yeah, that's where that comes from. It was widely used and I can smell it thick, which means I've either cracked open a cod liver oil bottle or uh, it's just down here in the muck. Here's a container of some kind. I'm gonna see what this is. Wow, that's an old, that might be wooden. That might be, oh, I might keep that. It's like a barrel keg. That's like an old keg. I wonder if it says something. You know what, I'm gonna keep that. That's made of wood. It's, it's a wooden, like a keg or something. Whoa, I thought that's maybe that where the cod liver oil smell was coming from, but there's only like a bone and a couple other piece of fabric or something, rubber in there. Ooh, that is wild. I am definitely gonna hold on to that because it's made of wood. I mean, just a really cool artifact in the dump. Oh, oh boy. Toxic sludge smell is actually really getting me. I love the smell because it reminds me of bottles, but boy, it gives you a headache. <sighs> like a shower hook, <laughs> but not. Whoa, look at this. Whoa, whoa, there's an STD plunger. <laughs> That's, that's like a cure, you, you stick that in the tip of your, uh, well, you know what. It's got some mercury in it for you, you know, get rid of your gonorrhea. <laughs> that's medicinal right there, medicinal plunger. It's made of vulcanite rubber, highly condensed rubber. Oh, I don't know what this is, but it looks like a little mini liquor bottle. Is that a sample beer? Oh shit! Oh shit, it is a sample beer! Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god. It's a sample beer. It's a freaking sample beer bottle. Fredericksburg Bottling Company, San Francisco. Oh my god. Oh, please be mint. Oh my god. Oh. oh. Oh my god. Oh shit, I gotta, I gotta, un oh my god, it's got the beer in it. It's got the freaking beer in it. I gotta get it out of there before it explodes. It, it, this could explode because it's being depressurized. Oh. oh my god, I punctured it. Okay, I smell it. Oh god, it smells rank, but I don't know. Boy, that just probably was old beer. I had to do that because the pressure built up in there could have caused the bottle to explode. Oh, that's that's badass. That's freaking badass, mofo. That's, that's, oh man. Oh, what a rush. It's still got some of the, the label on, or the uh, foil on the neck. That's a Fredericksburg, San Francisco, sample-sized little miniature beer bottle. Absolutely, absolutely incredible find. That That's just so freaking cool, dude. Dude. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. Yeah, that's a restaurant, a freaking salesman. Salesman came in and, hey, try this beer. I think your customers will like it. You know, it's a sample, salesman sample. Unbelievable with probably, most likely, the beer still inside. Oh my God. That was, that was amazing. Oh, Freddy, baby. Dude, hell yeah. It looks dark in, the, in this uh, flashlight, but that's a nice honey color. We're gonna enjoy washing that a little bit more. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. 
Where'd my headache go? <laughs> uh, put that in a snug place right up there and hope that rock doesn't roll down onto it. In 1890s San Francisco, a salesman for Fredericksburg beer would have taken this little bottle into a restaurant or saloon or maybe even to a baseball game and given it away as a marketing tool for the brand. Since this bot pocket is full of sauce and cooking extract bottles, this was probably a wagon load of trash from a restaurant or lunch saloon. I can imagine the salesman walking into this place and giving someone this sample bottle, who drank a tiny mouthful, didn't like what they tasted, and decided to toss the bottle and its remaining contents straight into the bin. This butt pocket keeps on giving, man. What's this now? What is it now? Come on now. Damn! Melon's food. Infant food. Wow, all kinds of food. far like an amateur freaking get my head caved in on damn they're beckoning me from back there god dang it it's talking oh she's talking and you see little little flutters of dirt coming loose i mean it's gonna fall and all that's gonna fall too son of a bitch oh it's hard to resist yep i knew that would happen unfortunately i couldn't film it because it's only me down here and uh, it's too busy trying to live. It sucks, man. Oh, fuck. Yep. You never want to stick your head underneath this, like overburden. You never want to mess with that. That's how you die. No bottle's worth your life because it's not the fact that you die that really matters. It's more like you won't get to enjoy your bottles or find more. Bottles. <sighs> Crap. Well, I think I'm gonna call it quits for tonight. This is pretty pretty productive here. It's just the power of a bot pocket in a dump, you know? Like, look at that. Just one little zone, I got most of my stuff. And this, this whole area I'd, I've slept through, maybe like three bottles, four, crazy. Oh, she's coming, oh shit. Oh yeah, oh there you go. Any bottles in there? Oh, it's still coming. Oh crap, oh boy. Yep. Whoa, bottle lanch, cool. Oh, broken bottle. <laughs> Whoa, that's killer. Oh. Literally. I've discovered uh, that bot pocket was like, one foot away from a giant concrete footing that they poured in this section to shore up for, for whatever the hell they put in the ground right here. <laughs> Something for a utility, maybe a sewer. Look at that, dude. That's how easily it can happen. Oh, and then also uh, when they took the last scoop out of this thing tomorrow, they would have uh, broken every single bottle I just dug up. As Sade said, is it a crime? Oh, God. Bottle rescue 911 over here. Jeez. So here's a lesson to always check the pile of crap that they dumped from that hole that I was in. I saw it sticking out. I thought it was a street sign. It's, it's a freaking Ghirardelli chocolate sign from the 19th century. Porcelain enameled. I'm kicking ass. I'm kicking ass tonight. I can't believe this. It's the same font as the street signs around here. Ghirardelli's Chocolate. That's a gold rush company. It's still around. Oh my God. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's metal co coated with porcelain. You can see here's where they hung it up from some, a store. Oh my God. They damaged it a tiny bit when they, when they yanked it out with, with the machines. But jeez. 
I mean, not too bad, you know? Not, not as bad as they could have. I, I can't believe, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, mama. Oh, oh that's a score. That's a historical, insane artifact score in this pile that they were just gonna take to a, a freaking dump somewhere. They're, they're just gonna take this to a landfill. I, oh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. What the? F <laughs> I can't believe this. During the gold rush, among the crowds of peons who were coming to California with the plan of striking it rich in the mining districts, sprinkled in, there were a select few who were a little more business savvy. These people understood that during a gold rush, the real wealth laid not necessarily in the gold itself, but in all the little things the miners would need to help them keep looking for it, whether it be gold pans, shovels, pants, and of course, really good chocolate. In the select group of savvy Gold Rush businessmen, Domingo Ghirardelli was no exception. In 1849, he traveled from Italy to Lima, Peru to sell chocolate there and make some seed money before moving to San Francisco and building a chocolate empire. By the late 19th century, Ghirardelli was one of the biggest chocolate makers in the country. This porcelain enameled advertising sign would have been nailed to the side of a building in downtown San Francisco in the 1890s. Oh, and a special little known bonus fact for all you bottleheads from Bottle Ned. Domingo Ghirardelli also made a soda water bottle. Yes, that's right. He dabbled in the soda water business in the late 1860s in his hometown where he had a mansion in Oakland, Oaktown, my digger. That's right. Look at the crudity on that one. I dug that up myself. Oh yes, that was a good day. Look at this reaching out from the muck. Help me, help me, my bottles, oh, bottles. <laughs> Freaking, uh, Dude, I am lending this dump a hand. Let me tell you, I hate to be cheesy, but uh, this is a helping hand for these artifacts, man. Let me tell you, what the? Dude, I'm starting to psychically manifest crap. I shit you not, I was just thinking about an insulator. I was just thinking about this. Wow, it's a freaking mint condition ec and &M. This is a San Francisco electric construction and maintenance company insulator. Unbelievable, it looks aqua. Wish it was cobalt, but this is, this is, oh, oh wow. Oh God, I, well, hell, I'm really hungry and I'm, uh, I'm not gonna be uh, leaving tonight. No. No siree, definitely not gonna, uh, not gonna leave this site until I've taken down this mother effing pile too, man. This is it's freaking ECM insulator, 1870s, telegraph insulator. I can't even, this is, this is insane. A good pile is a good pile, man. <laughs> Update. It's like 6 a.m. after digging in that crap. Dude, I've been dosed heavily with toxic waste. I'm not lying. I, I, I find it very hard to, I haven't been able to lose consciousness fully the entire night. And this is a total side effect of this sludge. This has happened to me before, but this is pretty bad this time. I think it's because I was in that confined area and there was no ventilation, really. I was completely boxed in. So I've just been lying here, not really fully passing out for eight hours now. I'm also really excited to wash the bottles. But yeah, I got dosed with toxic waste. A 
All right, the spoils. I was really looking forward to washing these pieces off because I know when they dry, that patina will just explode out of them. This is what makes that toxic waste worth it, man. Oh my God. Oh. No, 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 fuck. Oh. Oh. No, dude, no, oh. go away. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> Fucker. Oh, that was a close one. <laughs> oh my God, dude, please. We got some uh, sensitive subjects here. I got an incredible array of objects. I'm gonna tell you what this thing is in a second. The cat doesn't break it. Put this down. Oh my God. So I'm gonna start with this really unusual, like a mustard jar but it's atypical um, of the barrel mustard design. Okay, um, I'll move it over here and then I'll, I'll put a, um, a screenshot on the left side of, you should be seeing a normal barrel mustard. So it just says C and C in a little circle. This is the top, it's not really, the top is just another barrel hoop. <laughs> There's these strange seams on the side over here, maybe the space containing the label within these little seams, or it's just a design to make it look more like a barrel. Probably had a label here. Um, yeah, never seen that before, ever. Here is the, uh, the Fred. <laughs> Some really cool patina on this, just a nice white glaze. It's a, it's a honey. That's a honey amber for sure. Sample beer, salesman sample. The basic idea is, you know, this, this is way too small of a container to hold any kind of beer that uh, you could just drink and get a buzz off of. So salesmen would come and bring these to restaurants, bars, customers, whoever, and uh, offer them up as a little sample of their product, you know? Try this. Basically, a shot of beer. Okay. Um, this was also in that same layer that I believe came from a restaurant. Look at the patina on that freaking JSP sauce. Unbelievable. They call these a JSP. That's the, there's like a J, an S, and a P in there. I'm not sure what order they went, but that's the monogram. They're really cool, teal colored. Beautiful. I love the patina. I love the patina. Oh my God. Yeah, that's a, that's a winner. Um, this came out of the pile next to the ECM. This is just a standard, probably a European beer or alcohol, maybe sake, maybe it's from Japan. I don't know, it's, it's a, kind of an unusual shape. It's not like a total beer shape there, but uh, whatever it is, it's, it's nuclear. It went nuclear. Awesome, another awesome piece. I mean, this dump makes every piece of junk from the 1890s turn into a piece of gold, literally. Here's another one from that layer, which I believe was a restaurant, a, a beautifully patinaed, jumbo-sized Lee and Perrin sauce. <laughs> I think it has an applied top even. Focus, there you go. Here's the stopper, complete with also a nice artist's palette of uh, patina. Just put that right back. Jumbo bottle, jumbo, jumbo stopper. The whole piece is complete. Here's your standard cone inkwell. But again, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> God, it's just, this shit is so nice. It's just, a, it doesn't get better than that. And you know it doesn't. I love the dump patina. Here's the generic coffin flask. I wish it was embossed from a local saloon. It could have been. I found a couple in that same dump that were. Rat Fink Inkwell, again, patina. Just stellar, man. I love it. That's the, you'll recall that was basically the first bottle that I saw. It's a little miniature Florida water. 
from our favorite druggists in New York, Murray and Lame Man. Another just, just nice washed out sea glass looking bottle. This is really cool. This is a paint keg. Um, I don't want to touch it too much because I don't want to give myself lead poisoning on top of all the other toxic waste. I was, I've been taken in the last 24 hours. Look at this little, there's like a little, little thing hanging from it. Like a, for whatever, whatever reason. Little deal there. Uh, maybe the, is the handle, part of the, the handle like where you, where you pick it up. And that's part of it. Because I noticed there's there's a missing one on this other side. Anyway, toxic uh, lead paint keg, but beautiful Victorian artifact. Just the same. Look at how perfectly preserved the base is. Perfectly preserved wood. Everything in that dump is just almost perfect. This I saved. It's one of those weirdo Euro bots, Amber Pecan, but um, I have no idea the history of this bottle. I don't really care. <laughs> Turn of the century, European, whatever. But um, the point is, I mean, the patina, I'm gonna actually use this as a flower vase. <laughs> Put flowers in this damn thing. I mean, look at that. Woo -hoo. Whoa! -ho -ho. <laughs> it's just. Here's a pitcher's castoria, all frosted, sea glassed, with, uh, with the cork in it still, and the castoria still preserved in there. What's left of the medicine they threw away. That was a children's medication advertised as being free from opium. There's a, I, I save everything out of this dump. Here's just a jar lid patented in 1864, maybe a midget mason, but again, with that patina, all the stuff is ranges from the 1880s, 1890s, except the insulator, it's a little older. Marchands, hydrogen peroxide. Everyone knows that. Some bubbles in it. Unfortunately, this one didn't smoke out. Some, some items are unpredictable in this dump. I mean, in this case, the uh, <laughs> this one didn't do anything. And usually amber colors are really good at, at accumulating patina in this dump. But for whatever reason, it was probably the composition of the glass. It didn't have the right things in it to uh, react with the toxic waste. <laughs> it just didn't do anything. A little disappointing. There's the, uh, the shoe blacking, shoe polish, whichever English, that will not patina. <laughs> so that's the same as if you dug it in regular soil. Here's a, here's the plunger. You know what I'm gonna do here? I'm actually gonna take, for the first time in 120 years, and whoa, it's, it's, uh, it's embossed there. I'll read that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unscrew this lid because I can feel the rubber. There's a, there's a pressure in there. So I'm gonna see what's, what's going on in there on camera in a second. I'll just run through this. Help me. I saved you. Could this be a whistle? I don't know, the way it's, I don't know <laughs> what the hell that thing is. Here's the uh, Acme cartoon shoe blacking. <laughs> Acme blacking. Hell yeah. Vaseline. I don't know what that was used for. Personal lubricant a lot of the time. Other things too, but oftentimes personal lubricant. Okay, this was really exciting to find. I found the CCM and I didn't film when I continued to dig a foot away and pulled out this, you know, seemingly whatever, like weird wood thing with wire on it. But you know, I've been around. This ain't the first time for bottle Ned. So I was like, you know what? What if those screw threads screwed in to this ECM insulator? What if this was the peg that the ECM went into? And uh, <laughs> sure enough, it fits. That's, that's the freaking peg that was on the telegraph pole on that power line. I, I believe it was attached right here. Yep, there's a nail that went into the freaking <laughs> into the pole and everything. So the pole went up like uh, this, I believe, and then this stuck out at an angle with an insulator sticking out and the wire wrapped, I believe, around it on the outside. But that's what I believe. You can correct me in the comments section, but that is really exciting to find this preserved freaking peg 
because usually these decay in the ground. You don't, you don't find these. But in this dump, you do. That's just, that's what I love about this damn dump. That's where the ECM, so I believe that ECM actually screwed into this particular peg. And that's the wire still there and they just ripped it down off the pole and threw it away in the 1890s because they weren't using these anymore. They were updating their insulators and power lines. How freaking cool is that? So oh, I think this is Goodyear 1851. That was the Goodyear. Goodyear Rubber Company. IR Comb. <laughs> That's where the name Comb came from. And this is uh, when they came up with these, uh, this, this vulcanite, this, this uh, condensed rubber stuff. So for the first time in a, uh, 120 years, this is a really special event. We're gonna open this uh, gonorrhea plunger See what's inside there. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Oh, it's making a noise. Oh, oh, oh geez. Oh, it's too bad you couldn't see that. It really popped out there. It got the original uh, wiener fluid in there. <laughs> and you have the rubber plunger in there, pushing down that, uh, that mercury right into your tip. You want to hear the best sound in the world? I can't film it because uh, I don't have three hands, but just listen to the best sound in the world. I'm putting the plunger in. <laughs> now I'm pulling it out. Oh, oh God, it's so satisfying. <laughs> I've probably contaminated myself with tar, petrochemicals, mercury, and lead at this point in the last 24 hours, but my body's having a great time. <laughs> Growing cancer. I just had to get it wet because there's a little bit of staining on it. Look at the insulator. Look at, look, look at the glass, look at the slag. I mean, they didn't care. There was no quality control. These were just utilitarian objects. I mean, look at the slag in there. Unbelievable. These these insulators are just such a beautiful chunk of glass. That's why people love them. I mean, incredible. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> they didn't care. Big old bubble. There's like a weird melted crack right here, but it's in the making. It's like actually got a like a big surface texture to it on this side. I mean, just they just didn't care. This is just a total utilitarian ut <laughs> utilitarian object, but Today, we love imperfection in our antiques. And so, that's look at how special that is. <sighs> God, killer. And we can't forget about this bad boy here. Jeez. This is actually in pretty decent condition, all things considered. I'm surprised they didn't just totally waste this. I believe the, the equipment did this when they dug it up. And as soon as they bend and stress the metal, this porcelain enamel coating pops right off. So this is as good as we could we could get this thing, you know, given the uh, circumstances are imperfect of, uh, you know, being able to retrieve this and find it. This is just an incredible artifact from San Francisco. It's an advertising sign for the Ghirardelli Chocolate Company, which has existed since the gold rush. Um, wow, there seems to be a, a maker's mark on here. I can't quite read it, what it says. Looks like a French name, Marsand or something. And then something else, but I'm not sure where this thing was made. I can't see that, maybe just names. But yeah, or you know, this could have been damaged back in the Victorian era, and that's why they tossed it. But typically, you know, they'd tear down buildings or rip things off buildings and put new ads up or whatever. And just, you know, whatever condition it was, that's the way it is. But nonetheless, uh, an incredible porcelain enameled sign from the late 1890s. 
the back of it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. You can see where they nailed it to a building. These nail holes. Wow. Ho oh, ho. Man, that's historical. So here's another view of this whole setup here. Um, what I originally wanted to do was to take this wire off and be able to rethread the CCM and just show it to you guys. But what happened was back in the 1890s, somebody had the idea when they dismantled this whole thing from the pole and we're gonna go to throw it away. They, they had the wire and they, they wrapped it around this thing. This is somebody 120 years ago, their idea, their dead idea. <laughs> you know, my whole thing that I talk about where sometimes you're digging up somebody's thought that's manifested into an object like they they thought to use t this was since this was garbage and they were going to throw it away they they had the thought to take the wire and wrap it around this wood so it's less of a you know cumbersome object and the wire is not sticking everywhere so it was easier to just throw into a dump cart and toss away um so it's really cool the way you can just see that the person that did that um in their action just embodied into this artifact Another thing I wanted to point out is this dump can really give us a glimpse into how human nature has never changed ever. <laughs> and that being, you know, when you find like a plastic water bottle or a newer bottle today that has like a screw cap and um, mostly I noticed like eight and a half times out of 10, the screw cap is, uh, is screwed back on to the bottle before they throw it away. You'll see it wash, you'll see things like this washing up on the beach, like, uh, especially in the plastic water bottles, which is pretty cool because, you know, as humans, I guess we have the impulse to screw the caps back on our containers before we throw them away. So in the 19th century, of course, most bottles were corked, but you can still see that they replaced the corks on actually a majority of the bottles that I'm seeing in this preserved dump. The difference is in this dump, the corks are still intact. So in the ground, the corks have been deteriorated. So we can't really see this phenomenon and prove it. But this dump shows us that people would typically, after consuming their medicine or beverage, even in the 1800s, they would plug the bottle back up with a cork before tossing it away. A little side note to this dig, um, it could be because of the toxic waste exposure or it could be just because my memory sucks, but uh, I have accidentally swallowed a, a piece of a fork here um, and I'm really not looking forward to going to the bathroom. Oh, oh. hey, cheers everybody. Ah. I was trying the old hair of the dog technique with my toxic waste exposure by drinking this 1920s Clorox bleach. Anyway, you're going to stick around for part two, I hope. We're going to be digging into some more toxic waste, finding some more nuclear patina bottles. And in the meantime, you know, I don't mind poisoning myself for everyone's entertainment and more so for bottles. But if anyone can spare like a couple bucks a month on Patreon to help with my medical expenses, that would be awesome. All right. Cheers. <laughs>